Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Jim Pugh and I'm here to give you a course called The Seven Steps to Financial Freedom and Independence. But before we begin, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I am from a little town in Hartlepool, which is in the northeast of England. And when I grew up, nobody taught me about money. I didn't learn it at school. It wasn't taught in school. My parents didn't teach me and I don't blame my parents because information wasn't as easy to access as it is now with things like Google and being able to pretty much find out the question, the answer to any question. So I'm going to tell you one thing quickly. I'm starting a bit late on my fire journey. Most people start in their sort of 20s to 30s before they realize Gee, jesus christ maybe i should be saving but uh what happened to me is that i pretty much live my life like a zombie like you know like like a, a cloud in the wind getting blue left right or, or or a leaf in the wind but a funny thing happened to me uh, at the age of 40 when i hit 40 i went for a run in my hometown in hartlepool along the beach six mile run and along the coast road and by the time i hit the coast road about three miles left to go i just stopped i couldn't i couldn't go anymore and i was like oh my god what is wrong with me? And I just thought, Jesus Christ. And I, I just suddenly thought, oh my God, I'm halfway through my life. I could be dead at it easily. And what have I got? I've got nothing. So anyway, with this, I don't, well, I don't know if it was because of that or might have been something to do with the um, spice rum and coke I had the night before, but, but anyway, that's just, that's how the story went anyway. But, um, so w with uncertain times that we're living in now, um, that was one of the reasons I made this course and the fact that, you know, I think it's a quarter UK adults haven't got any savings at all and 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 pretty much caught with the pants down when it came to this pandemic. So anyway, we're going to crack straight into the course now, right? This is the course, the seven steps to financial freedom and independence, part one of seven. Yes, there's going to be seven videos. So make sure you subscribe, like, comment and share because it's going to be good. As you can see, it's broken down into seven courses. Today, we'll be doing the first part, which is, it's like the mindset you need to, to have and making changes to save money. So part two will be more about paying off your debts, the snowball and the avalanche method. Then it'll be, part three will be create an emergency fund. Part four will be invest to beat inflation, not just investing in money, invest in yourself as well. Also, part five will be create side hustle or online business exploring passive income part six will be exploring your life purpose and what makes you happy and getting paid for what you love not just sitting in front of a in, in a desk looking out the windows at the sunshine you know just sitting at a desk like eight hours a day wondering what you're doing in your life <laughs> and then the, the last part will be cashing out on the four percent rule what when you actually get get to the point where you can pretty much do what you want with the rest of your life what's the four percent rule oh we'll have to wait for part seven for that but yeah today we're going to concentrate on uh, the mindset let's crack on so this is what the course is going to be broken down into mindset and making changes to save money so today we're going to talk about what is fire what's your why who's on board with you are you going solo friends or family with you in this then i'm going to talk about reducing costs of living the big the big ones like housing transport food and bills uh, then we're going to talk about cutting back on the little things haircuts posh coffees clothes eating out takeaways nights out things like that you know subscription services we'll talk all about that and then we'll talk about staying on the wagon and what's next so let's crack straight into it what is fire off the internet, obviously, I found this little quote. Here it is. Financially independent, retire early. That is what FIRE stands for. It's a movement dedicated to a program of extreme savings and investment that allows proponents to retire for earlier than traditional budgets and retirement plans would allow. And it was started in 1992. Uh, if you want to know more about that, you can just say, just Google it, find out why and when it was started. Anyway, if you can stick with this, you will, you could be, be able to retire 10, 10 to 20 years earlier, which means you could retire at 40 or 50 instead of 65 or 75 maybe. And that would mean you could have a better quality of retirement, a longer retirement. Um, you could, obviously, if you, if you work till 65 or 75, you might only have another five or 10 years left and you might your body could be knackered. And you might not be able to enjoy your retirement. So this is why a lot of the people try and do this 
or attempt to do this. Not everybody can, but you might be able to do this if you can follow the steps, okay? Anyway, you need to know how much is enough. What's your fire number? And it's always changing. Basically, a fire number is a number which is it's like a, a cash amount or investment amount of money you would need to pretty much live off the live off the interest of it and not have to work or or maybe you might be able to like passively soft retire so maybe work part time or just do something that brings a little bit of money in concentrating your hobbies and stuff like that uh, so it's the fire number is very hard to calculate because throughout life things could change your health conditions might change you might need more money for that a family member might become ill and you might have to look after them or pay for them to go into a home um your you could lose your job you could get a different job you could get more money less money things like that so it's always changing so it's always worth checking it and making sure that you're still on the right path towards fire you can do that with spreadsheets and stuff like that. We won't be covering spreadsheets in this, it's more of an introduction, but um, we're gonna carry on with it. What FIRE really means, now I did say on the internet it says financially independent, retire early. That's the catchy phrase. Now, what it really means is and that actually stands for financially independent and free, so you can do what you want with the rest of your life. So basically, that's pretty much what it means it doesn't mean you have to retire you could soft retire you could pursue anything you wanted really L live live your dream whatever you want to do but anyway let's go on to the next part okay we've just covered what's fire and now we're going to talk about what's your why so you need to ask yourself are you ready for this why do you want to retire early and you do have to sacrifice a lot of things along this journey but don't give up on the things you love. I will be telling you throughout this alternatives that are just as good or if not better than what you were doing before and still be able to save money. So that will be good. So you need to ask yourself, what do you want to do? If you if you actually get to the point where you can retire, what are you going to do with your life? You could become an artist. Be creative. Now, in the future, AI is going to take over a lot of the jobs. Robots, trust me, 5, 10, 20 years for definite. If you're going to be retiring 20 years, there's going to be a lot more AI, a lot more automation. Um, so we, we could have anything. We could have passive incomes and all sorts of things coming along. But for a human being, creativity is very important. Remember when you were a kid, you used to just draw pictures, play with Lego. It didn't, it didn't matter if you were good or bad. You just did it for the fun of it. Think about how much you identify with your current job. Are you your job or are you... I mean, personally, I'm just like, there's levels, I'm me first, then I'm a dad to my kids, and then I'm a, I'm not my job, but I, 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 I've got a title of my job, I do my job, and then all this stuff, but I always say I'm me first, before I say I don't really identify with being in the job. So anyway, you could open your own business with less risk, so you could, you know, you've got this back up you got a big big cushion you know so you can take more risk and you can explore things what you want to do you know uh, with your and uh, i can't even say the word entropial no and you could become an entrepreneur and make open your own business and um yeah that would be pretty good i'd say with the fire with you know with the with the big buffer in the background also uh, if you wanted to you could spend more time with friends and family look after a loved one you know and still be able to survive i know there's benefits and things for looking after people but and a little bit extra would help uh, save the world maybe maybe you want to become an eco warrior and just you know put pictures of yourselves eating vegan meals in a in a van or something and just try and i don't know plant live off the land i don't know put in the comments what would you do what's your why put it in the comments what would you do as I said, you could travel the world in a van. Uh, you could soft retire, charity work, walk the dog, make slippers, sell them on eBay. <laughs> I don't know, sing songs, climb mountain, go skiing. The truth is, it's entirely up to you what you could do. You could do anything. So as I said before, what would you do? Write it in the comments. What would you do? Just what, what's, your, what's your dream? Tell me in the comments right now. Leave a like and a subscribe while you're at it. Right, let's go on. Okay, we've covered what's your why now. And what is fire? Now we're on to who's on board with you, solo, friends or family. Let's have a look at this one then. 
So, are you a young lad? Are you single? No commitments. Maybe, maybe single's the easiest way to go because you've got nothing else to worry about. But uh, have you got any commitments that you need to do? Are you divorced? I'm, I'm, I've had two wives myself. I, I pay maintenance and stuff, so obviously that's something I've got to I factor into my plan. Uh, I'm not going to just stop paying maintenance, even if, even if I get made redundant, especially because of emergency funds and stuff like that. You, you should always factor all that into that as well. So don't forget about that. Are you a single parent? Are you struggling with two kids? You know, you've got to think about all this. So who's supporting you? Have you got any friends? Supportive friends? Have you got friends that would take the piss out if you did this? You've got to think about that. Would they take the piss out of you if you suddenly decided to, you know, not go out as much or not eat out as much? But you, can, you could suggest better and cheaper ideas to have fun with your friends. And um, instead of going out for meals all the time, you, should, you could suggest having a house party or something or come down with me. I've them come down with me a few times, my friends. And it's a right laugh, I tell you. Not on the telly, just, just our own little one. Competition between four of my mates. Good laugh. Anyway, the importance of getting everybody on board. So... If you're with somebody, uh, I don't know, you might be married and you've got a wife that you, you need, you know, you, you've been researching this, but she's not interested. She, she's still on her own little path, you know, spending loads of money and, you know, like wives do. I've had two, so I know what it's like. We need to buy stuff for the house. We need more stuff for the house. Why do we need, oh, probably why I'm single. <laughs> anyway, um, so you need to get them on board. Uh, but if you're not supported by those around you, what do you do? I mean, there was a book that I read called Playing With Fire. It's a very good audio book. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's good. It's basically about an American couple and the, the blokes listen to all, because there's loads of stuff on, on YouTube and that about fire. But the blokes listen to all the stuff about it and he's trying to persuade his wife and she she's struggling giving up things and that's really good. Look at the link. Also, if you have got unsupportive people in your life and you just can't see a way to do it and you really want to do this fire, is it time to trim your friends? I mean, you can't really trim your family, but... I mean, I've been divorced twice, but um, <laughs> I think, I, to be honest, I would find it really difficult to do with an unsupportive wife if I, if I was married again. So if I did choose another partner, I'd probably have to make sure that they're on the same same journey. I'd probably put on my dating profile that, like, yeah, make sure you're on the on my, it's a bit selfish, but, you know, just try and select somebody who's got similar views to you and similar values and hopefully that will all go good. But if, it's, if not, it's trying to trim. I mean, you could start slowly cutting out bad influences and bad friends and try and find some new ones maybe um <laughs> bit of a sticky situation but you know what's better for you in the long run make you happy in the long run is what's good let me know what you think about that in the comments anyway <laughs> so let's carry on so i've just covered on who's on board with you solo friends and family and now we're going to cover reducing the cost of living the big ones housing transport food and bills so housing now then I've got a few points here to talk about. Saving for a larger deposit. So the larger the deposit you save for a house, um, if you are going to buy a house, you would pay less. It's kind of like the loan to value ratio. So the more, the more value of a deposit you put in, the smaller the loan and the cheaper the mortgage, basically. Uh, if you've already got a mortgage, you could mostly after about five years or a fixed term, you go off the fixed rate and you go on the a variable rate and sometimes it's higher so say if you want a two percent fixed rate for five years and suddenly you go on the variable rate which is a 4.8 that's a lot higher so you'll end up paying a lot more interest so you could remortgage and that's that's an option you could pay you could pay overpayments on your mortgage to get your mortgage paid off quicker and if you do the maximum overpayments you can you can easily reduce a 25 year mortgage to a six or seven year mortgage so that's something to think about if you can afford it you could choose to buy or rent a cheaper home or a, uh, move to a cheaper location so you could sell up and downsize that could help obviously there's all, all the costs of moving and resetting up home again and the stress of that but in the long run it could work out if you don't want to move uh you could rent out a room say if you're a, you know i mean if you're if you've got a wife and kids and stuff like that and it's all ram packed isn't you can't do that but say if you if you've got a house and you've got spare rooms and if you're single it's easy but if you've got someone living with you they don't mind as a spare room you can speak to them uh so you can get like a long-term housemate with you know or if you wanted to you could temporarily rent, rent out rooms on airbnb that's another option and it's a quite a chunk of money that could help you towards uh, getting to fire quicker if you're really brave you could move back in with your family sell your house or stop move out and get rid of loads of stuff and just move back in your family. If you, if that's one thing you do, I mean, in that book I was talking about earlier, that's what they did, the couple, and they loved it because 
they had a, a young baby and uh, and their parents got got to see more of the uh, grandkids and stuff like that and such a, like a much of a slower pace of life i mean depend what sort of house they've got <laughs> if they've got room for you you know <laughs> Joining the armed forces is a good idea because uh, if you're young enough and you're brave enough, um, you can you can join the armed forces. And that, uh, I know for a fact that the, the accommodation in the forces, you know what I mean? It's like 60, 70 pound a month for a room and no bills. So pff, it's a no brainer, really, if, you, if you're that way inclined. Uh, very good, good, very good thing to do to do that, to, to achieve fire. You can live in a van. You've seen all the van life is on YouTube. Well, I have anyway, because I was I was going to do it. <laughs> that's that's the way to do it. There's loads of loads loads of videos on how to do it, and if you're that brave to do that, crack on. So there's there's some good ideas for saving money on housing. So that's the biggest cost. Then we've got transport. Get rid of your cars, maybe walk or keep your car. Walk, bike everywhere as much as you can. Uh, if you're not traveling all the time, if you don't need your car for long distance driving, if you just find so you live in a city and you're not really going out of it or once or twice a year, public transport, you might have to wear a mask at the moment, but you know, it's all going to die down at some point, isn't it? Car share, if, you, uh, if you're going into work, you've got people living near, you you driving one day, driving the other day, whatever. Uh, selling extra cars, if you've got extra cars, I mean, cars are the biggest depreciating asset and the maintenance costs are quite high. So you need to get rid of cars, really. And I mean, obviously you need one car. If you need two cars, you need two cars. But try and persuade to downsize cars if you can uh, to something more affordable. You don't need the biggest beast. Part of this journey is to try and get rid of ego and advertising and keeping up with the Joneses. You need to, you need to get rid of all that mindset because you're now on the fire journey with me and everybody else. <laughs> Okay, you could buy an eco car. Myself, I've got a little Clio, a Renault Clio. She's beautiful. She cost me £1,500. I've had it serviced. I've looked after it. It's caused me no problems whatsoever. You know, it's got, it's got a right personality as well, but um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a little, there's a place where it's like the, the pinch point of, don't get one or two, don't buy one under a grand. You want, you want it somewhere probably between 1500 and 2000 uh, would be a good price point. And then if it does break, if it costs too much to fix, buy another one. But obviously try and, you know, try and do your research. And anyway, my if I fill mine up, I get about 650 miles for it. It's like £10 a year at tax. No, £30 a year at tax. And insurance is cheap as well. And it's pretty good. Anyway, take your foot off the gas. Don't just, you know, take a deep breath. Take your foot off the gas. Don't fly around everywhere. That'll save you some money over the long run. Uh, use your car as a last resort. That's a good one. So why not get a... It, if you've got a supermarket nearby, get your bike, uh, buy a little trailer for your bike, lock it up outside, put all your shopping in a trailer, put a cover over the top, cycle back home. Do you know what I mean? There's no rush. You get one life, you know, you're rushing around, take a deep breath. Preventative maintenance, that's just about uh, looking after your car. If you, if you have to have one, you know, keep the oil topped up. If you keep the air pressure correct in the tyres, it saves money on fuel as well, things like that. Anyway, that's transport. If you know anything else about transport to save money, put it in the comments. Uh, food, <clears throat> that's another big expense. Uh, try to use budget supermarkets if you can. Things like Lidl and Aldi in the UK. Down label brands. So if you're always buying Heinz, it's just advertising. I know you might be used to it, but I, I use the, the down label brands. I don't. I use like Asda Zone or Lidl Zone or the Stockwell's one, whatever it is. And I, I have no problems with it at all. I mean, I don't really taste the difference. I, just, I like ketchup. I'm a massive ketchup fan. But anyway... It's just good. It goes for the same for all your brands. You'll save so much money. Try and buy whole foods where you can and not processed foods. It's better for you. You can learn to cook with them and make really nice meals. Meal planning. Um, you know, plan your meals for the week. You could do batch, batch cooking on the weekends. Uh, so you can like freeze loads of meals and, you know, stop spending loads of money. Like if you're at work, don't go to the, sh you know, the subway or whatever else and waste your money on things where you can make more better beautiful food at home make make your work makes jealous of the food you bring in think, oh i wish i could do that yeah they can it's called spend a couple of hours on a weekend do some batch cooking teach yourself how to cook better and you'll have beautiful meals like curries all sorts of stuff get some cookbooks experiment it's all about creativity cooking anyway uh coupons that's another good one you get free you can get you can get like bow and get ones and that uh tesco points for that I did say don't go don't go to Tesco it's quite expensive but if you do if you do fill up at Tesco you can use your points to get 
cheap stuff and that coupons like you can save them if you want but i'm not a massive fan of coupons but uh because some i think they're persuaded by stuff you don't really need if you do get some good coupons some of the things you do get make, take advantage of it uh, another thing for food intermittent fasting apparently it's re- meant to be really good for you uh, for your health uh, cleans out your body so every now and again like once or twice a month or three or four times a month just have a, a day where you, you might skip lunch and skip breakfast and lunch and have a meal or, or just have a day, if you, you know, just research it, research it, intermittent fasting. It's supposed to clear out all your dead cells and that, and, you know, you'll probably be thinner, you'll save money on food. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's it, it's a thing anyway, research it. Uh, reduce waste. So if you're always buying, like, takeaways and that, I've done, I'm, I mean, I'm not perfect. No way. I mean, I buy pay, takeaways as well. But, like, say if you're buying a takeaway and you've, you've already got food in, you might find that your fresh food goes off quicker or you might end up throwing stuff out. It's another waste of money because you've, you doubly waste of money because you've bought a takeaway and you've thrown stuff out. So try not to overbuy, uh, try and use things. I know we all get, we all get um, distracted and things go wrong and whatever else. But anyway, we're going to move on to bills now. But uh, if you've got any good food tips, put them in the, in the comments. Bills. So I missed the L out on yearly. Will you forgive me for that? <laughs> Okay, uh, compare your bills yearly on comparison sites. Uh, remove your cookies so you can do multiple comparison sites and different ones and try and get the best deal on your electric, on your gas, on your telephone, internet, whatever else you can get, car insurance, everything. Just compare it because don't be loyal. Be money saving. Anyway, so yeah, definitely do that. Energy saving bulbs, fill out your whole house, spend a bit of money on extra good energy saving bulbs. They'll save you money over the months and years. So they'll be definitely worth it and they'll last forever and ever and ever. Anyway, uh, reduce subscriptions. So I'm a massive fan of Amazon, Netflix, Amazon Prime, uh, Spotify, Hulu's America, I think. Uh, Audible spelled wrong again. Forgive me. So yeah, I'm a massive fan of all of them, but I try not to have like more than one or two on the go at once. Spotify, you can listen to free. It's got ads and you can't, you know, I mainly, I mainly listen to podcasts anyway on Spotify, but I love the music as well. But I don't mind listening to an ad. Uh, so you can easily stop paying nine ninety nine a month from that. And if you do cancel it, they'll sometimes send you an offer for like three months of nine ninety nine if you want to get back into it again, if you've got spare cash. Uh, there's a good thing about Audible as well. That's seven ninety nine a month, but you can cancel your subscription, but make sure you spend your credits first because they go, they go away. But if you if you are sub to them, you can literally, I'll do another video about it later, but you can literally like swap your audio books out, the ones you've read for other ones dead easily. Just let you do it because you subbed. And after you've done it, you could just cancel for like two or three months if you, if you, if you really do love audio books. And um, there's other ways to get audio books. You can listen to them all on YouTube as well, but if you want to support them, but it's up to you. Anyway, I'll do another video about that. Yeah, so reduce your subscriptions if you can. So you need discipline while you're in your house. Uh, make sure you turn your lights off when you leave a room. Uh, don't fill the kettle up right at the top if you're only making one cup of tea. Just quarter fill it or something like that. Because kettles take a massive spike of electricity when you're using the kettle. So make sure you just put as much water in as you need. Don't waste it. Don't leave TVs on standby because they do. So just switch them off at the wall or switch them off by, by, the, by the switch. Uh, install a smart meter. They can tell you what you're using the most in the house and stuff like that. And what, what your peak times are and stuff like that to be using stuff. Try and use like put your heating and your air con and your washing machine on. and But only use them when you need to. Like try and reduce air con if you can. Or windows if you need, if you can. Just things like that really. Just try and reduce. Always think about the goal. What you're trying to do. Think about you retiring 20 years earlier and having, you know doing what you want for the rest of your life. Um yeah if you can think of anything else about bills and discipline to save money just put put it in the comments and um i'm not perfect i'm a fallible human being so we covered the big things and now we're going to go on to cut, cutting back on the little things so before you start getting rid of everything and you know you always remember what do you love don't give the things up you love for god's sake i love being creative so i'm always going to prioritize you know if I do need, if I do feel like I need extra equipment for my YouTube channel or whatever else, um, or cook, all the things I love like cooking and I'll, I'll prioritize that in my life. Um, but then I'll try and get rid of things that don't mean things to me, you know, spend them on my kids. Yeah. I'll spend money on my kids as well, you know, things like that. But anyway, so always remember what you have and you don't have to get rid of everything. Okay. But little things you can control, try and think, creative ways to do it anyway so haircuts cut your own hair look what i've got here what's this hang on a minute what's this (coughs) 
cut my own hair, you see. That's what I do. And I save about 180 pound a year doing that. So there you go. Cut your own hair. Obviously, not everyone. I mean, if you are like 20s, 30s and you're starting to get follically challenged like I was, um, one point, you just have to accept it, okay? And then just shave it all off like me. I, I don't I don't think I look that bad with a massive fat bald head. But, uh, you know, I just accept it. I've got to live with it, you know. Um, but obviously, if you're a female, um, welcome to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. I, I don't get many female viewers, so thank you very much if you are here. Leave a comment, say hi. Maybe you can get a friend to cut your hair. You know, does it have to be perfect? Who, who are you impressing? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Find a way. Find a cheaper way. So you can find, find like a, somewhere to get changed change to different air, hairdressers or something. So that could save you like hundreds of pounds a year. Right, so posh coffee. It's a it's a little niggling point. I mean, I have bought the odd Costa before. Everyone's bought them, but try and reduce them. Stop buying takeout coffees like Costas. Basically, they cost three or four quid for a cup. If you're getting a cup a day or a cup every other day, it's literally cost you thousands of pounds a year. A thousand pound for a cup. A cup. That's a thousand pounds you could invest or a thousand pounds you could save. Do you know what I mean? If you really love coffee that much, get yourself a little filter kit at home. Make it at home with an air press, an aero press or something. Buy yourself a nice little bag of the, you know, buy it in bulk or something, your favorite coffee. Make it at home. Get a flask. Take it with you. Get a little bag. Put it in your little bag. And when your friends are buying posh coffees, pull out your little your little coffee, pour it in and go, oh, try that, love. That's lovely, that, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And they'll be like, oh, they'll be well jealous because you'll be saving money. You'll have you still have nice coffee and they'll be spending loads. But, you know, it just takes a little bit of planning. Anyway, clothes. Guess where I got this from? It's an all right shirt, isn't it? It's not a bad shirt. I mean, it's not the best shirt. I've got better shirts upstairs, but I don't buy it. all my clothes from charity shops, but I did buy this. Cost me about two pound fifty. It's a nice shirt, you know. It's casual. Uh, I like it. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to spend big bucks to look to look good. Uh, so just remember, stop thinking about what everybody else thinks. You buy you buy clothes, nice clothes, or a nice hat or a nice bag. You show your friend friend, and they're like, "Oh yeah, that's good, isn't it?" Oh, and about ten seconds later, they say, "Come on, then, let's go and get coffee." Or let's go to the pub. Do you know what I mean? So they've forgotten about it, and then I don't know. You just need to forget about your ego. You might have an addiction to, to shopping. Just try and find out ways to break it because you don't need that many clothes, really. You can get donations off people for clothes. Get friends like, oh, have you got too many clothes? Well, obviously, it's the same size as them. But if they're getting rid of clothes, so don't, 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 don't send that to a charity shop. I love that. Do you know what I mean? They might even give it for free. Don't, do you know what I mean? Don't, don't feel bad about it. Just do it. You know, follow the directions on, on your clothes. You know, and wash them properly. Try not to shrink them in the wash. Look after them. Try and make your own if you can. If you've got like, I don't know, broken clothes, try and cut them up into making something else, make some track your bottoms into short or something or anything you can do where you can think you can save money on clothes. And as well, the shopaholics out there, you don't need 10 coats, 20 pairs of shoes and you, who are you impressing? You just throw money away so you have to work till you're, till you're 70. Just have a little think to yourself, do I really need 10 coats? Sell, either sell them, give them away because part of being doing this journey is to follow the minimalist journey as well. So when you become minimalist, it doesn't mean you've got bare walls, bare everything, and you're living on a little cushion, eating at one bowl and one cup and that. It just means, I've, like I said, remember what you love. So you've still got all the things you love in your life, but get rid of the crap, the, t the tat. You don't need it. You don't need it. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Anyway, let me know what you think about clothes in the comments. I've got any ideas I might have missed. Eating out takeaways, nights out. Try and reduce them if you can. Uh, if you're going out every night or every weekend, try and go out every other weekend. Um... Or once a month, if that, you know, try not to spend too much, you know, try and go on a happy hour or something, or try and get a few drinks before you get out. i say house parties and come down with me, as I said that earlier. If you can get your mates, say, come around, bring a bottle of wine, and I'm going to cook for you. We'll play some parlor games, I don't know. Oh, what's those bloody games you can play? The card games, humanity, cards of humanity and stuff like that. Anything, uh, Monopoly, anything you want. Just, you know, daft little games. Get Obviously, wait until this lockdown's over, but um, <laughs> yeah, things like that, you know. So, suggest home dates I've put on there as well. So, that means if you're dating, you know, so you know, I'm actually I'm actually quite a good cook, you know. So, if you want to come around my house, I'll, I'll wine you and dine you, and um, we'll have a little chat and that, you know. And um, don't feel like you have to, but uh, you know, 
I'm, I think I'm a better cook than most of the restaurants around here anyway, I love. Come on, babe. Come on. Come for a little date. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So smoking, if you do smoke, uh, try and change change what you smoke. If you're, buy, if you're buying, well, obviously try and stop if you can. But if you can't, if it's not your time yet, try and reduce how much you smoke or try and change your brand. Try and, if, if you're smoking cigarettes, smoke tobacco to try and reduce it. Try and do some meditation to get rid of it because um, I've heard that meditation helps. So if you're smoking, you can just go... <sighs> And the breath is just as good, apparently, as a, as a as a cigarette. You tell me. Anyway, let me know what you can. If you've got any ideas about that in the comments. Okay, holidays. Obviously, everyone likes a holiday. Um, some people more than most. Why not go camping? Try Airbnbs instead of expensive hotels. Use comparison sites and use multiple ones. Try and find last minute deals and sales package deals. Make sure you clear your cookies as well before you try and find these comparison sites because if you've been looking before, sometimes they'll look at your cookies and put the price up and stuff like that. So clear your cookies. If you're young enough or brave enough, try and stay in hostels. You probably might make some friends. Um, it's a lot cheaper and you, may, you, might, you could make some friends or even some enemies you don't know about. And if you're super brave, try hitchhiking because, you know, if you're, not, if, if you're a vulnerable person, try not to do it or if you don't trust the area, but usually gut feeling, you know, you could travel. Yeah, you could slow travel, which means you go to an area, you you live it's normally if you've got a van you can do this um you can slow travel live in an area for a while and move on explore the area don't just go and then just go to multiple different places and just take it steady and still apply the the methods of fire while you're there and try and enjoy yourself and just you know try and live the slow paced life instead of rushing around all the time look for out season deals obviously you've got kids at school that could be a problem um but if you if you can get around it somehow out season deals are cheaper look for deals and if you're super, super brave or young enough or daft enough, <laughs> join, join the armed forces. The adventure training packages are very good. Uh, you can go for skiing, things that would normally cost you a thousand pound. You go for like 150 or sometimes even free. Uh, it's not just skiing. You can do all sorts of stuff as well, like uh, mountain biking. God, anything base, not, not base jumping, uh, coast steering, which is jumping off cliffs into the sea. Um, anyway, we're going to carry on. So we're on the last part now. You'd be happy to know. Staying on the wagon, what next? Right. It's a slow process. I'm on the journey, but I'm nowhere near the end yet. Got a few years to go yet. So I'm kind of on the like the, the part where you're saving for an emergency fund and investing, but I kind of messed it up and did the investing first. I was too keen. Really try and do the emergency fund bit first after you've done the part one and two. Anyway, it's a slow process. Just follow the steps, the seven steps, and you'll be fine. You will fall off the wagon, but don't stress and be kind to yourself because you will make mistakes. You will get three takeaways in a week, or you might just go out drinking and smoke yourself to death for two night, two weekends in a row, or waste loads of money on food, or might you might have a little, you might have a gamble or something. But all you do is take you take a deep breath, and you go right, okay. That's me. I'm back on the wagon. So basically, you just, all you need to do is like write down and remind yourself of your why. Why you're doing it. Um, write down what you want to do, and you know, take a restock. Point yourself in the right direction. Imagine you're a compass, like, or, or you're on a plane. And it's we veered off course, and you're just recorrecting it back on course, and you'll be good. So then you'll be back on the fire wagon. Yeah. So look forward to part two, where you'll put your newfound money that you've got from what doing all this to work for you. So let's go through what we covered. Uh, we covered what is fire, what's your why, who's on board with you, solar friends or family, reducing costs of living, the big ones, the housing, transport and the food bills, cutting back on the little things, haircuts, push, posh coffee, clothes, eating out, takeaways, nights out and staying on the wagon and what's next. So there you go. You've now completed part one of seven of the seven steps financial freedom and independence. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And look forward to part two, which is paying off your debts. Um, if you haven't got any debts, um, it's still might be worth watching. So you might, you might still learn something, but you can skip this part three if you want. But a lot of people have debts these days, don't they? Anyway, <laughs> let's have a look. So thanks so much for taking part. If you've got any questions or comments or anything you could think that would help other people or what I've missed, please put them in the comments. Don't forget to consider subscribing. Like the video because it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Share this video with one friend or family member. And if they all do that as well, God, you never know, I might get loads of subs. <laughs> anyway, consider following my social media. I have Instagram, I have 
Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, all linked in the description. And don't forget, I've got the audio book I mentioned before, all linked in the description. If you found value in this, uh, I am trying to do this full time and leave my job one day, or eat, I'll just have it as a passive income. I have not over a thousand subs yet, hopefully one day. But uh, if you do want to donate, if you found value in this, I've got various ways to do it through PayPal or becoming a patron or even a crypto link for Bitcoin. Oh, anyway, I'll see you in part two. Uh, where you'll find out the best way to pay off your debts using the snowball or the avalanche methods. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.